Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Kara Stillen, and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. If you haven't already done so, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe. In this last video, we covered major depressive disorder. In this video, we're going to cover persistent depressive disorder, so let's get started. In order to be diagnosed with persistent depressive disorder, dysthymia, an individual would need to have the following symptoms. A, the individual would have to have a depressed mood for most of the day, for more days out of the week than not, and this depressed mood would be self-reported by the individual or by the family relatives close to the individual. This must take place for at least two years. With children, their mood can be irritable instead of depressed, and it only has to be present for one year to be diagnosed. During a person's depressive feelings, they may have two or more of the following symptoms. Number one, they may not want to eat or they may overeat. Number two, they may have insomnia or hypersomnia. Hypersomnia is sleeping for long periods of time and, and still wanting to sleep. Number three, they may complain of having no energy or excessive fatigue. Number four, they may complain about having no self-esteem or even low self-esteem. They struggle with their confidence. Five, the individual may have trouble concentrating on different tasks or on making different types of decisions. During the two year period of time, the individual has never gone up to two months without experiencing the symptoms listed above. The individual has never had a manic episode or a hypomanic episode, and they do not have cyclothymic disorder. Their symptoms are not better explained by the diagnosis of various psychotic disorders or forms of schizophrenia. Their symptoms are not present because of a substance or medication the individual has taken. The symptoms cannot arise because of a medical condition the individual has. The, in, the symptoms the individual has cause significant distress in the person's job, home, in relationships with others, or in their academics. The professional that diagnoses will want to specify if the individual has 1. Anxious distress, 2. With mixed features, 3. With melancholic features, 4. With atypical features, 5 with mood congruent psychotic features, six with mood con six with mood incongruent psychotic features, seven with peripartum onset. Now professionals will also want to note if the disorder is in partial remission or if it is in full remission. They also want to specify if there's early onset before the age of 21 years old or two, late onset after the age of 21 years old. The professionals will also want to specify if the problems are mild, moderate, or severe. So the essence of the persistent depressive disorder dysthymia is a depressed mood that stays with a person for most of the day and for a majority of the days up for up to two years. It's normal for a major depressive episode to come before persistent depressive disorder. It can also happen that major depressive episodes may occur during persistent depressive disorders. Those individuals that experience the symptoms of persistent depressive disorder, they should be labeled with this, but also with major depressive disorder. Those individuals that have major depressive disorder usually complain about feeling sad or in the dumps, like my dog. It is really important to ask various questions, given the patient about how they're feeling, because sometimes feeling sad can become so much more of a norm than the, so so much more of a norm that they don't think about telling the professional that they feel this way. About 0.5% of people in the U.S. are impacted by dysthymic disorder. 1.5% of people in the U.S. are impacted by major depression. Persistent depressive disorder usually comes around in childhood, adolescence, or early in adult life. These instances tend to be chronic. 
For individuals that get depression during their childhood or adolescence, these individuals are more apt to have comorbid personality disorders or substance use disorders. Those individuals that are neurotic have anxiety disorders, conduct disorder, have anxiety disorders, conduct disorders, or others have a lesser chance of going into remission with depression. Parental loss or separation can also cause continued problems into adulthood. It is important to look for symptoms of psychosis when observing a patient with major depression as these are fairly common with psychotic disorders. Well, we have reached the end of that video. Um, we've got so many more videos to come, but just one more video for the depressive section of videos that we are currently covering, and that is on premenstrual dysphoric or dysphoria disorder. And then we're going to be moving on to the anxiety disorders. Now, I know a lot of us have anxiety and we see it as a particularly negative thing, but I'm really hoping to kind of, you know, shift that around for you. All of us have anxiety to keep ourselves alive and to be ready for different circumstances. We do have anxiety disorders that go to an extreme. So we'll be talking about those in the next couple of videos. So there's selective mutism, specific phobia, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, agoraphobia, as well as generalized anxiety disorder. So these are the different anxiety disorders that we're going to cover. And if one title doesn't necessarily fit your anxiety, that's okay. We're going to delve deeper into the meanings of the different anxieties and what they hold for people. I really hope this information has helped you, has helped you to study, has helped to reduce the um, taboo-ness about mental health. And um, I'm so glad to have you with me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.